Welcome to Hindustan Times. My name is Jayashri Nandi. I write on environmental issues for Hindustan Times. Today we have with us Mr. K. S. Jayachandran. He is the Special Secretary, Environment Department, Delhi Government. Welcome, sir. Hi. Good afternoon. Very good afternoon to you. Hello, to all the Hello, listeners. Sir. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sir, um, uh, welcome to the HT Environment Conclave. Um, we have a few questions for you uh, related to how how you're seeing uh, uh, various environmental issues in Delhi, for example, Yamuna, air pollution, plastics phase out, all of these. So I'm going to go one by one on these issues. Um, so I wanted to ask you uh, for a very long time, um, for decades, we've been seeing that Yamuna has mostly been in the same state and the pollution levels haven't improved, especially in the Delhi stretch of uh, Yamuna. Uh, what what are the reasons? Also, there are various government schemes that are working both from the Delhi government side and the central government side. But why do you think we've not managed to improve and what can be done about it? Yeah, that's a very pertinent question. I mean, even as we know, it's a living entity, it's a natural entity, and uh, the, the river bed, the quantity of water in the river is pretty constant. But what is not constant is the population which is coming inside in the catchment area of the river. So that's why we see that uh, the water quality deteriorates as you go north to south. I mean, in a very, very systematic and a very I mean, consistent manner, the, the decrease in uh, water quality. And uh, the major uh, reason I have attribute it is the increasing population over time and uh, the sewage issues, the sewage issue issues which have been discharged into the Yamuna with, uh, because we, we have a lot of uh, JJ clusters, a lot of unauthorized colonies. And um, mm -hmm. it's very important to kind of treat all the sewage, trap all the sewage and uh, when not let the bio biological oxygen demand of the river go up. So what, what happens when your biological oxygen demand increases in the river is that you get, you get all a uh, host of issues related into uh, uh, the river, be it the frothing of the river or the deterioration of water quality, the, 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 the absence of aquatic life in the river. So these issues are just a reflection of uh, the, the discharges that is happening from the catchment area, that is from the city to the uh, river then we might know that every drop of water which uh, falls from our house, it ultimately lands up in Yamuna. So we need to be very clear about that because there are almost uh, I mean, around hundreds and hundreds of drains, of minor drains and major drains. Though there are 18 number of major drains, there are many hundreds of minor drains which actually reach to the Yamuna. And whatever water we spill over from a water, uh, spill over from either through the I mean, uh, organized sewer network or to the unorganized uh, open drains, it lands up in Yamuna. So what a citizen can do, one of the serious things is the use of soaps and detergents. I mean, there are serious BI standards for soaps and detergents, but then uh, the manufacturers of soap, the stockists of soaps and detergents, I mean, they, uh, it has not been made mandatory for them. So what we see in you know, our detergent water, in the soap water which you generate in your household, uh, they, I mean, they have phosphates and surfactants, which are a major reason for the frothing you see in uh, so it's very important we are actually taking some steps from the Delhi Pollution Control Committee to kind of pass directions to all the uh, soap and detergent manufacturers and stockists to kind of display their uh, phosphate percentage and surfactant percentage in the product so that the customer can choose wisely. Apart from that, this is a sewage part. Apart from that, another uh, big reason is because of the industrial effluence which comes out of industrial areas. So there are around I mean, 30 odd industrial areas in the India across the landscape of Delhi. So the effluence of these industry areas could also be a good source of heavy metals, especially cadmium, copper, lead, molybdenum, which reduces the water quality of Yamuna. So we are also actually taking severe enforcement action against industrial units and ensure that they have proper effluent treatment plants with all the units. So your uh, DPCC direction to soap companies and manufacturers is a very interesting point. Uh, are we going to see it soon? Has it already been made? To the yeah, to the yeah, soap. We already the, have been released it. Okay, you've already released it. Okay. 
so the other the other important issue for delhi which uh, a crisis which we face every winter is the air pollution problem though now in the last few years actually air quality has marginally improved uh, but uh, in the spring time and summer time the issue is not not that much but in winter air pollution levels go up uh, in a uh, they are they're severe and they is a huge public health problem uh, how do you think why do you think this this continues to happen uh, and what can be done about it uh, very well said i mean uh, yeah, yeah, just like water even air is a product of the population and when we have a, a, a very employment uh, generating space like delhi you will definitely have population coming inside and uh, as we kind of uh, apportionment uh, do apportionment of the sources of air pollution we understand that a major source of air pollution is because of vehicles so when the population comes in we have a huge number of vehicles and delhi has one of the largest registered number of uh, vehicles in the entire uh, country and uh, it is because of uh, the huge contribution of the vehicles on the road that we have this um, in the air, um, in the deteriorating air quality in delhi and apart from that there are other local emissions like uh, dust emissions i mean uh, roads and uh, so on and we should never forget the contribution of uh, the transboundary uh, transfer of air pollutants due to, due to stubble burning in our neighboring states but having said that delhi government and delhi pollution control committee have been taking very very proactive steps during the last 3 4 years and the results are there to show despite the increasing population the results clearly show that the number of better days number of good and moderate days have increased when we just forget uh, the 2020 which happens to be a covid or a lockdown year when you compare to the normal years of 17 18 and 19 2021 has been a very exceptional year in terms of the number of good days and uh, moderate days and uh, fair number of days in terms of where air quality and uh, the main reason i would attribute it to the monitoring strong monitoring systems in delhi and uh, for a small 1400 square kilometer space of delhi we got around 40 monitoring stations and it is a most intensely monitored space in the india country and uh, and it's because of the data which we get from this monitoring stations that we are able to devise specific uh, mitigation strategies in every hot spot and uh, having uh, mentioned hot spots we are very proud to say that the hot spot strategy of the government of delhi has also been very instrumental because we are not treating the entire space of delhi as on one single space we are i mean paying special attention to certain geographical areas where we find that the air quality is very bad and we uh, ensure that the local actions are taken be it uh, malba garbage repairing roads or removing traffic congestion points or me mechanical sweeping or night patrolling to pre- prevent uh, biomass uh, burning so apart from that information technology has been used we, last year we released a green delhi app which has been hugely successful we received about 30000 crowd source uh, pollution related grievances which have been resolved within uh, the sop time and uh, we're very happy to tell you that so far we have resolved 90% within the resolution time uh, of all the complaints which have been received on the green delhi app apart from that um, the, the winter action plan was a proper scientific stakeholder endorsed plan uh, which we actually uh, rolled out in the uh, hot spots as well as other areas of delhi i would say measures like this were very instrumental i would also take the name of the directions which you passed on the fire crackers though i mean we could hear the fire crackers going on everyone but there was a huge reduction in the uh, number of fire crackers that burned during diwali as well na so uh, there's a, a plethora of measures a combination of measures which i would say taken by the delhi government which led to a at least better air quality during this year and these and the, they definitely assure that uh, 2022 will be a better year and we will be better prepared in terms of all the mitigation measures that is very reassuring to hear sir uh, that 2022 is most likely to be better than the previous years uh, sir um, there's also something new coming up that is a single use plastic prohibition for certain items uh, in the single use plastic category um, which includes for example your bird straws uh, flag uh, star, uh, flag um, holding sticks and then various other crockery um, cutlery and all of that so uh, so how is delhi preparing for this phase out 
yeah i mean the central government has passed out this uh, passed this plastic waste management amendment rules which clearly as it told they identified certain items uh, which needs to be banned from 1st july 2022 items like earbuds plastic sticks plastic uh, flags candy uh, sticks ice cream sticks polystyrene and uh, i mean uh, the the delhi government has been taking proactive steps to kind of understand uh, to kind of uh, stay in readiness Uh, to uh, ensure that by July 22, at least these items do not appear in the market. And towards the direction, DPCC has passed strict directions to all the producers, the manufacturers, retailers that they need to phase out all these items by July 22 and ensure that they have zero inventory by July. And um, DPCC will definitely take stringent actions against all the stockists, against all the manufacturers. Will be holding stock by July and the remaining items by December 22. And apart from that, uh, we are also planning a huge mass awareness campaign on plastics, and we are trying to um, I mean, uh, I mean, collaborate with a few NGOs and other organizations to have a citizen engagement plan regarding the usage of single-use plastics. It's very important to uh, change the mindset of the customer of the citizen to ensure that the manufacturers and the products. Using single-use plastics do not arrive in the market. Apart from that, the industrial associations and the industrial units have been strictly monitored, and we have we passed strict directions to all the industrial units, all the manufacturers, to ensure that they do not have machineries which produce such um, in single-use plastics by July and December of this year. And we have also initiated market survey. Of all, I mean, uh, survey of markets of all Delhi to understand the availability of SUVs presently and kind of uh, set targets every month so that there's a phased reduction of the usage of plastics in all these markets. And uh, you know, this will not be a success unless we have very sound, feasible, and practical alternatives to single-use plastics, which can be actually consumed by the customer. And towards the direction, Delhi government is preparing. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, alternatives to single-use plastics policy, in which we are clearly laying down, laying down the clear alternatives which are economically feasible for the customer as well. That policy will also be soon on the floor. So, when do we expect that policy to be out? When do we expect that policy to be out, sir? The single-use plastic policy. Yeah. The policy we are uh, we, we hold uh, we are holding some stakeholder consultation with all the okay. recyclers with all the young entrepreneurs now. So I mean okay. I mean the document is almost ready. Uh, so uh, we are also in touch with DRDO to kind of some uh, get some technologies on bioplastics. So I mean I expect that the policy should be out within a month. Okay. So my next question to you, um, Delhi, of course, is a very concretized kind of a space. There's there's a lot of buildings, and it's not really, um, you know, there there are green areas, but there's a there's a lot of built up space. Do you have any plans to how can we increase our green cover? Also, uh, people are very very concerned about you know many development projects coming up and old trees being cut down. You may have heard or come across. Uh, these kind of cases. Any plans for heritage trees? You know, conserving trees, uh, avenue trees. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, just like water and air, I would also like to tell you that uh, the green cover, as per the latest State of the India report, forest report released by the Forest Survey of India, Dehradun, it also showed a good increase of around 17 square kilometer of green cover in Delhi. Even that is very good positive news for the citizens of the city. Uh, and uh, this includes both forest cover as well as tree cover. Very happy to say that forest department, I mean, in coordination with several departments, there are around 20 land owning departments in the city, and uh, coordinating with MCDs, PWDs, DDA. So we have managed to kind of increase the forest cover and the tree cover during the last two years. The survey comes out every two years. So the last two years, an amount of several 15 to 17 square kilometers is a substantial increase in green cover. So having said that, uh, 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 it's very all very important to kind of increase the green cover. And we uh, when we look at green spaces, there are a few categories of green spaces. One, you have this uh, uh, public parks which we see maintained by the MCDs and DDA. Number two, you have the roadside plantations or the central verges of roads, 
which are maintained by the road uh, owning agencies like PWD and MCDs. And number three is the community parks, which are equally important. There's a third category which we see in the local society, in the local RWA. And uh, I mean, it's very important to concentrate on this third category because we also we already have a sound network of public parks and and uh, I mean central vergers and roadside plantations but it's very important to concentrate on the uh, on the society parks on the community parks on the neighborhood parks and uh, the government of delhi has been i mean, uh, I mean uh, uh, supporting and assisting all the rws and ngos who could actually assist and uh, bring these uh, parks in a very uh, i mean green manner and towards the direction, we have a very good scheme in kind of assisting, financially assisting RWA. So I would uh, urge the, your listeners to kind of, if they uh, live in Delhi, it's very important if they have a RWA, if they have a society, they should definitely visit the website of Delhi Parks and Garden Society. So we, this is a small society which, they, uh, which the Delhi uh, government has it in the environment department. And this society gives financial assistance to all uh, resident welfare associations to the tune of around 2 to 3 lakhs per acre of a uh, park. So these RWS can actually avail those financial assistance to create as well as maintain already existing parks. Uh, that is one very important thing which we need to do. And uh, there is another angle is about the indoor air pollution, the indoor, uh, indoor air plant, indoor plants which we can maintain. And uh, the Delhi Parks and Garden Society as well as the Forest Department gives seedlings free of cost to the citizens so if you can visit the website of the forest department or if you can visit the website of the delhi parks and garden society you get a list of the nurseries where if the citizens go they get seedlings free of cost which they can actually plant in the neighborhood parks or they have it as indoor plants so these are very good existing schemes which the delhi uh, citizens can avail of to ensure that apart from the governmental initiatives that citizen could also play a big role in ensuring the small brown spaces they turn green in the future. Sure, sir. Sir, thank you so much uh, for your time. And we got to know about several new schemes, actually your directions on the plastic, uh, on the single use plastic, and also on uh, detergents uh, declaring the phosphate uh, content uh, is, uh, is new and uh, important. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, thanks for participating in the HD Environment Conclave. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.